been exactly six months since Paul and Maggie Murdoch were shot and killed at the family's hunting lodge in Carlton County. And right now, according to his own lawyer, only Alec Murdoch has been named a person of interest in the double murder investigation. Alec is behind bars, accused of stealing millions of dollars from his clients, clients over the years, and it's far from over. All right, Emerson is keeping track of the latest developments, and Anne is led any closer to making an arrest in the double murder. Well, Tessa, I reached out to SLED again today. They are tight-lipped, just like they've been for the past six months, only telling us that the double murder investigation remains active. However, this Friday, state prosecutors are headed to court on more fraud charges for Alec Murdoch. It's being held virtually at the request of the judge. Murdoch is facing another 27 felony counts from a state grand jury accused of stealing millions from clients, including the missing money from his late housekeeper's family. This unraveling of Murdoch's fortune is being felt in civil court as well. Just today, we learned of a new lawsuit. This time, the boyfriend of Mallory Beach, Anthony Cook, is suing Murdoch, among others, for the 2019 fatal boat crash that killed Beach. Cook was on board with Mallory and four others when Paul Murdoch slammed his father's boat into a bridge in Beaufort. Paul was drunk three times over the legal limit and underage. Cook's lawyer says Murdoch was well aware that his son was drinking underage and should have done something about it. Now Cook is looking for closure. That's certainly one of the goals uh, that along with, you know, holding uh, retailers and those uh, responsible with the transfer and sale of alcoholic beverages to uh, persons who are disqualified from purchasing them. Uh, you know, we have a real problem in our state, in our, in our country, with the number of deaths and injuries that occur every year due to irresponsible alcohol sales and service policies. And uh, the hope is that we can uh, hold those who do these things accountable and change those behaviors. Well, Carr says Cook suffers with painful symptoms similar to a PTSD diagnosis. Cook, his cousin Connor, who was also on board, as well as Mallory Beach's parents are all suing Murdoch, along with other parties who sold Paul the alcohol before that boat crash. Check out all this litter. It was picked up yesterday along I-26, and the contractor responsible for it says it weighs about a ton. Amy Russo is live along the interstate where that trash is located. And Amy, does that pile look bigger in person? Yeah, hey there. Good evening, Tessa. So it is actually pretty massive. So like you said, we're along I-26 at the Montague Avenue exit in Tahara. If you want to just give them a closer look, dozens and dozens of trash bags filled with litter. You guys, we have seen tires. We've seen cardboard boxes. We've seen aluminum cans. We've seen pretty much everything you can name it. And you guys, I'm told it costs a pretty penny to remove all this trash. A cup or a wrapper may not seem like much, but eventually it adds up to this. People are trash, you know, they throw a lot of trash in the roads. Yeah. And it's not good, so. That's the voice of Carlos Marine. He's the owner of FVS LLC, the contracting company hired by the Department of Transportation to clean up the interstate. You guys are hired once a month for a week, and is that to clean up all of I-26 in Charleston County, or is it just certain sections? Uh, certain sections. He says DOT pays the contracting company about $22,000 to pick up trash. A crew of about 15 works Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And when they're done, typically they remove close to six tons of trash. So why so much trash? I reached out to the Department of Corrections, who typically has crews out cleaning up too. In a statement, I'm told SCDC stopped work release about two years ago because of the pandemic. In 2019, about 22 litter crews cleaned 10,000 miles of interstate and collected over 100,000 bags of trash. It's your tax money at work. Maureen says the sad reality is what happens after they leave. Uh, every time we go back, even like two days later, we'll see more trash put out, you know, and people don't care. And Marin tells me normally this heap of trash would be gone by now, but because of today's weather, it did have to get delayed. But he says his crews will be out here tomorrow to pick it up. And Tessa, question for you. What counties in South Carolina does Marin say have the worst litter problems? Um, Charleston County? 
That's that's right, Richland County and Charleston County. So we're seeing quite a bit of litter here in the low country. Dozens of gallons of fuel spilled into Shem Creek this week, and we got to work for you finding out how spills like this can trickle down right to your dinner table. Our Charleston Clark went to a marine biologist to follow the science of spills and their impacts. In the last two weeks, at least two shrimp boats have sunk, including one right here in Shem Creek, spilling about 50 to 100 gallons of fuel. Experts say there are long term health and environmental impacts that can stem from these fuel spills. The first thing to consider is how much fuel has spilled. Gigantic spills have catastrophic effects. Smaller scale spills are less um, problematic. According to Dr. John Zardis, professor of marine biology at the Citadel, fuel is lighter than seawater, so it floats on the surface. If it's out there long enough, uh, it can start changing its conformation and it can form things like tar balls um, or other materials that wash up on shores, foul beaches. The weather can also play a role. So if you have nice calm conditions, the oil is just gonna spread and kind of float at the surface. But if you have a lot of wind or weather that causes choppy waves, then it starts mixing it in. And that becomes more problematic. Once that fuel mixes in, it can impact the food web, which can then eventually impact the food we eat. When the oil starts getting into the whole food web, then organisms are taking up toxic compounds like shrimp and oysters and fish and things that we may ultimately eat. And you know, a few of them with a small amount of toxins probably is not a big deal for us. But the more you eat and the more toxins you acquire over time, the bigger the problem could become. Dr. Zardis advises boat owners to keep up boat maintenance to prevent future fuel spills.